Today I'm going to show you the difference between DALI 3 operating as the free version, which is through Microsoft Bing's Image Creator platform, and the premium or paid version, which is through ChatGPT's Plus subscription platform. And they're two different websites, two different services. One's free, one's not free, but they both have different benefits and drawbacks. So I'm going to compare the two now so you can make the decision about which one's right for you because it can be quite confusing. So I've got this screen here. So I've got it split across two tabs. So I've got the Microsoft Bing Image Creator version in this tab, and this is the free version. So for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to refer to this as the free version now on because saying Microsoft Bing Image Creator about every time is a bit of a mouthful. And then we've got the version of DALI 3, which is part of ChatGPT Plus account here, which I'm going to refer to as the paid version from now on, just to keep things, you know, a bit succinct in, in terms of my talking. So let's start off with the free version. So if you haven't got a Microsoft account, you're going to need to create a free Microsoft account to use this. So if you go to bing.com slash images slash create, um, if you've not got any kind of Microsoft account, it'll you can create one there. Just create a free Hotmail account or something. You'll never actually have to use it. You'll never have to look at it. You just need to, use, to have it to log into this site. So I've got a throwaway Hotmail account that I don't use for anything. I don't even go into it, but I just use to um, mess around with this. So if you haven't got an account, just do that completely free. Whereas the ChatGPT version, you would go to chat.openai.com and sign in there, create an account there. Now, it's free to create an account within ChatGPT because there are elements of ChatGPT that are completely free. So for example, the GPT 3.5 model here is completely free and it's very good, but it doesn't create images and it's not linked to DALI 3. So if you're specifically interested in DALI 3, then you are going to need to have the GPT or the ChatGPT Plus version of an account which is a $20 I believe I'm just going to check it because I'm subscribed my plan $20 a month for the plus account so this is the paid option um, so just be aware of that but if you want more information on chat GPT as a whole because if you've never used it before you might have heard the phrase being thrown around and you're not too sure on what it actually is and how it works as a, as a whole then I'm going to link to a really good tutorial I've seen online um, in the description box below that explains the whole chat GPT thing um, for beginners in a very nice, clear and concise way, probably much better than I could. So go and watch that if you're interested, but just know we'll be referring to this, the paid version from now on. So starting in the free version through the Microsoft Image Creator. So we've got a prompt bar at the top. This is the core of it, where you type exactly what you want to generate. Underneath, you can see a grid of some of the images that people have created, just to give you some inspiration. You've got a little button here, where it's actually like an icon of a coin and a number next to it. They're boost tokens. And um, what that is, is you get a certain amount of those every day. Um, I think it's like 15 a day, it refreshes. And every time you generate an image, you use up a boost token. Uh, or whenever you generate um, a prompt, or type in a prompt, you use a boost token. When they run out, you can still generate, it will just be slower. So you can still generate, but you might have like a queue, you might have a waiting time. And then we've got the button, the create button, and then surprise me, which just puts in a random prompt. We won't be using that. Um, and for the for the broad part, that is, that is the that's the extent of the options. So nice and simple. Chat GPT, so the paid version. We've got the same prompt bar at the bottom here. We've got some other options that are within some custom instructions, settings, and all this in there. We won't go into those in this video because that's more for a separate, complete tutorial. But for now, just know that you've got the prompt bar at the bottom and you've got a history of your chats or sessions, they're called on the left hand side here. So every time you start a new chat, which is where you create your images. Um, you, you will have like this history of them kept here and you can rename them and delete them and so forth. So let's actually put a prompt in. So I'm just going to copy and paste something simple from a text document just to show you um, how the system works. So I'm going to just do a really generic one at the moment. And this isn't a tutorial on prompting. So this is just going to be something simple to um, just show you how the two systems work and the differences. So this is going to think about it. It's going to generate something. Now, as you can see on the right hand side here, 
on the on the creation screen when you start generating you will have a history of some previous generations here so you can see i've got a cat some coffee cups i've been doing previously now this has a bit of a history there it stays for a while but it the history is not massive so you would definitely be advised to save any images you liked as and when you're working on them to avoid losing them so it's generated a grid of four so the free version via microsoft bing at the moment typically generates four images a grid of four um, sometimes it can go down to two if they're experiencing a high sort of server load or processing load or something like that, but generally you get four and you go into the images you can see here it's quite interestingly put the dog's tongue above the bone which is quite funny and that's what you get you can share it save it and by save it it means you can save to a collection and then the download button click that and it will just download that image to your browser's download folder your default download folder and that's really it so it's it's kind of as simple as that you've got your four images that it spits out um this one's quite hilarious because they've the, the image looks really good but how the bones placed below the tongue is quite funny and if you don't like what you see there you can either choose to edit your prompt or if you like the prompt that you've done and you just want more variety just click the create button again and it will generate another grid of four images that may be something more to your liking so that's the basic premise of prompting within microsoft bing so let's go over to the paid version in chat gpt and look at prompting in here so let's paste the same prompt in and let's just click the send message or you can press return now because this is using the chat gpt element to create the images it's more of a conversational kind of format so instead of just giving you the images and that's that you can interact with it in more of a natural language to sort of steer the images in a certain direction or um, give it some other instructions but part of this as well and this is a good point and or a bad point depending on how you look at it it reinterprets your original prompt so we've put in here photo of a dog with a bone which is a very generic prompt and if we click into the image in um, chat GPT here you can see we only get two now this is a current standard unfortunately this used to be four like the Bing version but it's currently two um, so you get two options you go into this and click on the image to get to this expanded view and click on this eye information icon in the corner and it will say prompt and this can be a little confusing at first because you think well I've typed my prompt in it was a photo of a dog with a bone but what the chat GPT system does is it will take your input prompt mm -hmm. it will reword it into something that's um, a lot more detailed and it will then use that to send to Dali 3 so as you can see here it's put a ton of more detail in it's taken our basic prompt and added things like tail wagging sunlight filtering through the leaves etc etc now what it's doing is the the vaguer your prompt the more variety it will give you in terms of results because it thinks well this person doesn't really know what they want about they don't know whether it's you know the dog with the bone is it outside is it inside what type of dog is it so it will give you a higher variety of results the vaguer your prompt is if that makes sense so if you don't like these particular results you've got a regenerate button down here so you can click regenerate and again it's going to reinterpret your original prompt in a in a different way and generate two more images um, so you can expect to get with a prompt this vague you can expect to get maybe a diff completely different breed of dog maybe it's not outside anymore in different environment so we've actually got something similar in this one but normally you will get something quite different and the more times you click regenerate um, it will keep giving you various options now again you can click the eye and it's fluffy golden retriever sitting on the lush green lawn content you see it's, it's put a lot of natural language sort of sentence into this now which can be good and can be bad um, because it can take the, if you've got something specific in your head you're best to type a very specific prompt in to start with so for example we could type in um photo of uh let's just put a black lab playing in the garden with a butterfly um it has a red color with a golden bell 
and a bone is lying in the grass. And what this is going to show you, hopefully, is that um, Dali 3 is incredibly good at analyzing longer format instruction. So, for example, if we type something this specific into another um, AI platform like Midjourney, for example, then it's not going to be able to tick all the boxes. It's not going to be able to give you everything you want there. It will maybe have some of them, but not all of them. So hopefully here we're going to come out with something that is more close to what we want. So we have indeed got a photographic image of a black Labrador playing in the garden with a butterfly, has a red collar with a gold bell, and there is a bone on the floor. But even now we go into the eye and we can see that it's still added more information and more detail in there, even though we've given it a higher um, detailed prompt to begin with. So it's taken some liberties. So it's going to honor everything that we've typed, but then it's going to add some extra variants still to make sure that we still get some more interest in the images. So that is the main difference between prompting of the two. Now you can go into a more advanced mode in this and you can manually override the rewording and get it to take your exact prompt like the Bing version, but that's a tutorial for another time. That's a more advanced tutorial. So that's the difference in prompting between the two. Now we're going to come on to image formats and the actual um, the way that you can make your images in terms of sizes and resolutions. So in the free version, it's a square format and that's it. 1024 by 1024. That's all you can get. That's one of the restrictions of the free version. So it's a square format, like it or lump it. That's what you get, which is fine for a lot of things. And you can you can expand it in like photo P. So you can try and expand the background and things like that. In the ChatGPT version, the paid version, you can specify three, three aspect ratios. You can do square, 16 by 9, which is wide, or 9 by 16, which is tall. And you can see here, because of the natri nat sorry, natural language interaction of the ChatGPT version, you don't have to retype the whole prompt. You can just literally say again and then what you want it to change, and it will regenerate based on your original prompt in the um, or your previous prompt in the format you've now chosen. So now we've got a similar concept as a wide image. Now you can just use the term wide, tall, or square. You don't have to write 16 by 9, but these are the options you get. So you just get more flexibility in terms of in terms of the aspect ratios. Now, this is probably the biggest difference between the two. And I probably should have done this first because this could be a deal breaker. And if I have, I'm just going to re-emphasize it here. The images you create in the Bing, in the free version of DALI 3, cannot be used commercially. So you can't use images that you create in here to sell in any way, shape or form um, as per the terms of use from Microsoft. Now, there's a whole conversation about, well, how would they know? And, you know, all the and legally people say legally that, you know, AI images can't be copyrighted and all this kind of thing. That's a completely different conversation that I'm not getting involved in. But um, from an official terms of use point of view, Microsoft say you can you can only use these for personal use. Whereas ChatGPT created images, you've got full commercial use to do whatever you want with them. So you can use them on print on demand. You can, you know, make posters, T-shirts, e-commerce anything like that with them and you don't have to worry so that is that is a really big deal for some people i know that could be a deal breaker but if you don't want to sell or make money off your images and you're happy with things in the square format then for absolutely free you can do a lot worse than using the microsoft bing version so ultimately which version do i recommend well for me it's very simple i like them both i personally use the chat gpt version more because obviously i've got a paid subscription and things like things that i generate from it i know if i did want to go down the road of making prints from them and trying to sell them or sell them in like an etsy store or something then i'm, I'm covered but it's good to play around with the bing image create version if i'm just making a some quick picture something like funny or like a meme or something for social media or even just things from my youtube thumbnails or tutorial images and stuff like that that is absolutely great so Really, it comes down to whether or not you want to or can justify or can afford to pay out the $20 a month for the ChatGPT version and have all the extra benefits that you get with that, or whether 
just the free version with like a daily fast token limit is good enough for your own needs. I'm going to be covering both of them on this channel to generate images for to take into further editing or for whatever, because I feel like choosing just one and not the other is going to eliminate a certain percentage of the potential audience for this. So I'm going to be using both, try and equal in equal measure, and I will be doing more in-depth tutorials on prompting techniques and things like that, obviously, as we go forward. But I just wanted to do this kind of A-B testing overview. Hopefully I've covered the main points here, but if you've got any more questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll answer as much as I can. But for now, thanks a lot for checking out the video and I'll see you soon.